It's that magical time of year, my favorite, when the asparagus starts to come up and it actually tells me, pick me, pick me. Asparagus is one of my favorite, absolutely favorite foods. And I think it's the official vegetable of heaven. So. It's getting time. These guys, it's amazing how fast they can come up. So it looks like I know what I'm going to be having for dinner. Now, this asparagus is supposed to be dioecious. And from my understanding, all the plants that I have are supposed to be male plants. But yet, I'm getting uh, plants where they should, plants shouldn't be. Now, what I've done in the past, I've always marked my plants a few inches from where I planted the crown so I know where to expect them and where to weed. And like this guy right here, well he just kind of came up wherever so I must, I must have some female and male plants mixed in with my asparagus because it looked like they had a little asparagus babies. But anyway, it's time, well, this guy's not quite up yet. He's still growing. But I'll go ahead and start harvesting my asparagus for a few weeks and then I'll let them go to seed. I'll let them get, you know, they'll grow quite high and they'll kind of turn into a, a fern because I want to be able to strengthen the roots down at the base. So the plants next year will be a lot stronger. So, time to get my knife out and time to harvest. One of the things I try to do each year is when I mow my lawn, I'll come in and uh, put all the grass clippings on the asparagus for weed control. And sometimes I'll actually put down a pre-emergent. I got a really good pre-emergent I use that's rated for asparagus to kind of keep all the competition out. And I'll share that with you too. But you just take a knife, cut off the base. This guy's not quite ready to uh, be harvested yet. And I don't quite know how many plants one asparagus crown can produce. But often throughout the summer, I'll find these little teeny guys that just come up, come up from seed. And I'll go ahead and stake those and let them grow. And sometimes I'll wait a couple of years before I harvest those plants because I want to make sure they get nice and strong and have a good root structure. I have two kinds of asparagus here. This is the stuff I picked today. This is the stuff I just recently bought from a store. Uh, you can tell two little differences here. This asparagus doesn't have any white ends on it. This has already been uh, trimmed. This asparagus I picked, you can see that it's kind of white tip down here on the bottom. Now, when you do get asparagus, you want you need to prepare it, even if you're going to eat it the same day. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just get all the ends even like this and just get your knife and cut off about a, an inch of the asparagus. And then you can just take the asparagus, put it like in water, in your refrigerator and just let it sit there in your refrigerator and water. That keeps it hydrated. When you're ready to eat the asparagus, you want to find out where the tender pieces are because the very end pieces here can be quite tough and they're not enjoyable. So if you get a relatively sharp knife, you can just kind of come here and tap tap the asparagus until it goes all the way through. When it goes all the way through, you know it's fresh. So if, if I take, let's see, let's try this piece right here. If I start tapping this down on the end, it's not going all the way through. But as I come up, it goes through. So I'm cutting off all the hard pieces and terminating it where it's nice and soft. That way when you serve this, and you eat that down lower piece, you're not gonna be chewing on it all day. All right, 
So all this asparagus, this is all the tender stuff. Now, the asparagus have these like thorn shaped leaf things right here. And there's different opinions on what to do with these. When the asparagus comes up out of the ground and grows, it is possible for these little leaves to capture dirt underneath them. And if they're not cleaned properly, there's a possibility that as you're eating the asparagus, you might get a little bit of a crunch from dirt that may be under these seeds, under these leaves. Now, some people will actually take these and just kind of slide a knife down the stem of the asparagus, taking all these little leaves off. So when you're done with the asparagus, you just have this nice clean uh, shaft without any of the leaves. I rather not take all the time and I just leave everything on here and a lot of restaurants do some don't but it's it's rare that I've ever had anything that's unpleasant so it's up to you whether you want to take these little leaves off the asparagus or trim them off it's whatever you whatever makes you happy so this asparagus right now is ready to cook and until it is cooked I'm going to put it back in to the water to keep it nice and fresh. Now the same goes with the store asparagus. Now I don't know where, let's see this rubber band say, okay so this rubber band says Produzo of Mexico. Okay so this asparagus is from Mexico. I have no idea when it was picked. Uh, sometimes my asparagus will be fatter than store-bought asparagus. Uh, depends on how often it's picked. My asparagus is usually going to be much, much thicker. Store-bought asparagus is usually going to be thinner. So same thing with here. Just start on the end, find out where it's nice and tender, and it cuts off e equally. And just go through your asparagus and prepare it. Now I'm going to freeze dry. I'm probably going to have this for dinner. All this other stuff right here, and here, here, and here, I'm gonna freeze dry all of this. Now, presentation means a lot. It's nice to have a nice long piece of asparagus on your plate. But the problem with freeze drying asparagus is it gets extremely brittle. And when you end up touching it and packing it and everything else, it, it, it just falls apart. Once I prepare all my asparagus, I'm just gonna cut it up in probably one to two inch uh, short little pieces that way it kind of gets it goes through the freeze dryer a little bit better and it, the, and it goes through packaging a lot better I'd love to have nice long pieces but it's really not practical here's all my end pieces some of these are pretty tough little gals here I mean it took a lot to chop off to uh, get the tender pieces but this will just go back into my compost and it'll be like the whole cycle of life thing so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to chop these down into smaller pieces for my uh, trays. We're going to load the trays and into the freezer they go for pre-freezing. So I'm going to grab a bunch of these, size them up on the bottom, and just chop these up. Now I don't think I'll get any argument that, that tips are probably the best pieces, but when eating, you gotta take what you can get. Now, normally, I would pile these trays as full as I possibly can. I could probably get all this asparagus into two trays, but I don't have anything like asparagus to freeze dry. The next thing I'm gonna freeze dry is milk, and I don't wanna mix milk and asparagus together. So, including the trays, I have 4,239 grams of asparagus. If I divide that by four, I need each tray to have 1,060 grams in each one. So this one has 65. So I take a couple out here. Get that. So this one is 160. I'm going to go through and make all my trays the same weight with the same product. That way, when I put it in my freeze dryer, all the trays are going to be done at the same time, and they'll be, then they should be equally as dried 
as a next. I kind of call this balancing the trays. Now, because I'm not overfilling my trays, and that's a practice I do a lot of the times, these, this batch of asparagus will finish up, up a lot faster than not. So I have all these trays ready to go. As you can see, well, these are not really filled at all. Like I said, I could, I could dump all of this into two trays and it would work just fine, but I don't have anything else to freeze dry. I guess I could go to the store and buy more asparagus, but it's late in the day. So all this is going to go in the freezer for pre-freezing and then on into the freeze dryer. And when I pre-freeze, I like to pre-freeze at least overnight. One other thing I forgot to do, I'm going to do a little demonstration here. So I'm going to make a little spot here and I'm going to get five asparagus pieces. These are going to be the full size dad, full size. I'm going to put these full size ones right here. Okay, I'm going to do a little demonstration about the texture of asparagus before and after it's frozen. As you can see, fresh asparagus nice and has a lot of it's nice and firm but after after it's uh, frozen and thawed out it's a whole other animal this is my asparagus right out of the freeze dryer and in this tray we have my original five long pieces of asparagus and these things are just really delicate and that's one of the reasons why I cut my asparagus up into smaller pieces like this is because if I try to put this into a bag, it's just going to get destroyed. So why not just go ahead and cut it up anyway? So we're going to rehydrate this and compare it to frozen asparagus and fresh asparagus and make uh, a side dish in one of my uh, most favorite ways to prepare asparagus. I have here asparagus prepared three different ways. This way right here, well it's really not prepared at all, but this is fresh asparagus and you can tell because it keeps its shape. It's nice and firm and this is what I enjoy eating. This asparagus right here was fresh asparagus that was frozen if you want to know what your vegetables are going to be like or produce is going to be like when you freeze dry it is just freeze it in the freezer take it out thaw it out and what you end up is pretty much what it's going to be like well if you can see that this asparagus has some serious issues here it's just really lost its lost its firmness kind of emaciated if you know what i mean but it's still okay. And the last one we have here is freeze dried asparagus. Now, I have not reconstituted this yet. I just wanted to let you see what it looked like. It's kind of shriveled up and it's really brittle. And so I'm going to go ahead and reconstitute it. And then you can compare, well, compare this to these other two. My asparagus has been rehydrated. I love my freeze dryer. I have never regretted getting my freeze dryer, but there's just a few things freeze drying does not do well with, and I'm afraid asparagus is one of them. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the other by the time I finish this song? So, you know, when you take a look at asparagus, you know, you really want something that's fresh, that can hold its shape, that looks really good, that's crunchy when you eat it. And even the frozen stuff, I mean, at least, you know, this frozen stuff is still kind of the same diameter as the uh, fresh stuff, but the rehydrated asparagus is just kind of, you know, it's just, it doesn't do well 
as far as presentation is concerned. You know, which would you rather have on, you know, next sitting next to your London broil? Would you have this or would you have this? So that can be a bit of a, an issue with asparagus. Now, with the chopped up asparagus, this can kind of go along with the dinner a little bit better than this can. But there is a place for asparagus like this, and that's in cream of asparagus soup, which is a favorite. And the recipe we're gonna use is my mom's recipe that was brought with her when she left Vienna, Austria, just before the Anschluss. And that's when Hitler basically went into Austria and bullied Austria in capitulating to uh, Germany. So we're gonna make that recipe. It's a favorite of mine. And we're gonna be using our chopped up asparagus. And this is a really good recipe. For me, there's only one way to cook asparagus and that's steaming it. And I have this really nice little pot here that has a really deep basket that is almost perfect for asparagus. So I'm gonna take out the basket. I'm gonna put a little bit less than, oh, about three quarters of a cup of water. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on the heat and wait for the water to boil. Our water is boiling. So we're gonna go ahead and get our basket and put all of our asparagus in there and go ahead and we're gonna steam this for five minutes. A handful of asparagus is about five minutes, a little bit less than a handful. It'll be about four minutes, something bigger. It's gonna be about six or seven minutes, but I've, five minutes is about what you need for asparagus. Cooking asparagus will help break down the fibers in the asparagus stock. Now with our frozen asparagus or the freeze dried asparagus, we really don't need to cook that the freezing process has pretty much broken down the uh, fibers in the asparagus stock. So whether it's freeze dried or just frozen and thawed, you really don't need to cook that asparagus because it's gonna be fairly tender. All this asparagus needs is just to be heated up. I'm going to prepare this asparagus in the way I really enjoy it. And I mean, you can just put salt and butter on it and that'd be just fine, but I just go one step a little bit further. So I got some Parmesan cheese here. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna take some of this Parmesan cheese. I mean, it's, it's shredded already, but we're gonna get this and make it a little bit more fine. Like so. Okay, the time is up. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. and take out our asparagus. Okay, we're gonna take our asparagus, or some of it, and we're just gonna arrange it side by side like that. We're take some butter and just lightly coat the asparagus with some butter here. We're gonna take a little bit of salt And then we're going to finish it off just with this little bit of a sprinkling of Parmesan cheese. I'm just let that set, let, let it melt just a little bit. If you need to, if your asparagus isn't quite hot enough, you can just throw this into a microwave just for a few seconds and just heat it up prior to serving. So this is our asparagus ready to eat. I love it this way. I could eat this all day long. This is how I prefer asparagus and it is really, really good stuff. But let's go back and take a look at the frozen and freeze dried asparagus. This is our frozen asparagus. And you know that the, the size and the color, you cannot tell the difference between this and the fresh asparagus until you actually pick it up. So that looks pretty good to eat too. And then there's the freeze dried asparagus. 
Well, it's the same stuff, but it just does not come back as well as the fresh and frozen asparagus. The color is kind of there. The size is definitely not there. But, I mean, once it's kind of dressed up, it looks a little bit better. I would eat it, because I love asparagus. So we have fresh, frozen, and freeze-dried asparagus. Either way, I like asparagus. If I'm having some fine dining, I definitely go with the fresh. You really can't tell the difference with the frozen. Where it really comes down to is if I take this up right here, it, it keeps its shape. If I pick up this stuff right here, it kind of, you know, a little bit wimpy on that. And with the freeze dried, kind of the same thing. So depending on how you like your asparagus, I haven't met an asparagus I haven't liked. So this is one way to serve asparagus. We're going to move on to cream of asparagus soup, one of my favorites. The first set of ingredients for cream of asparagus soups are two cups of water. Then we have one teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon sugar, half a teaspoon onion powder. Now, if you don't want to use onion powder, you can use two slices of chopped onions that's diced, a quarter teaspoon garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon celery salt, an eighth teaspoon pepper, we got three bay leaves, and we have two cups of freeze-dried asparagus. So we're going to combine all these in first and make a broth under uh, low heat. Then we're going to add the asparagus and bring it to a boil. So we're going to go ahead and start with two cups of water. We're going to go ahead and turn on the heat on medium for now. We're going to add one teaspoon salt. half a teaspoon sugar, half a teaspoon onion powder, or two slices of onions diced, a quarter teaspoon garlic, quarter teaspoon celery salt, an eighth teaspoon pepper, and three bay leaves. Just go ahead and stir this up and dissolve all the ingredients. And then we're going to add four cups of freeze-dried asparagus. We're going to mix this up, let it absorb, and then we're going to see how much water we have left in this to adjust the water as needed. So our asparagus is on medium heat and we're going to keep it there until this starts to boil. Now, depending on the size of the asparagus, sometimes you can buy asparagus that's really thick at the store or what you may grow. Sometimes it can be really thin and spindly. And so we'll just have to kind of monitor how much water. We put two cups of water in this originally, and that would be for medium-sized asparagus. So we still want to have some liquid in here. When I pull back the asparagus, we want to see Oh, about a half an inch of liquid, a quarter inch. And so as this asparagus sucks up the moisture, we just want to keep a quarter inch to half inch in the bottom of here. And we want to keep everything that's submerged and let everything rehydrate until it starts to boil. Okay, our mixture is boiling. So we want to fish out the bay leaves. We don't want to put those through. We 
Well, there's the other bay leaf. I had three in here all together. Found it. Okay, so I got all three bay leaves out. So this mixture right here is now going to go into a blender and we're going to cream this up. Now, if you just kind of take a look at some of these pieces uh, compared to the whole pieces of asparagus I had, some of these have rehydrated to a pretty decent diameter and these actually look better being chopped up into smaller pieces than the pieces that were actually whole. Just something to observe there. So there we have it. That's step one. And this mix mixture goes back into the pot. The next ingredient is not as rigid as you might think, but we need two cups of milk or two cups of milk in combination with half and half or with cream. So in this case, I have one and a half cups of milk. I'm going to go ahead and put this back into the blender. And then I have a half cup of cream. So we're just going to kind of slosh this around in the blender to get the remaining amount of asparagus out. And then this will go back into the pot. So when we're done, we just need two cups of liquid consisting of milk, half and half, or cream. The last remaining ingredient in procedure is I have a one cup measuring cup with just a little bit of water in here. And to that, we're going to add four tablespoons of flour. Now, because my wife is gluten free, I'm using a gluten-free flour that we get from Walmart which is this all-purpose flour right here. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of dissolve this into a paste the same you do if you're making a gravy. Okay once that's into a paste this will be added to the soup, and this is basically a thickening agent. So go ahead and mix that in. And then we want to go ahead and heat this up. And you just monitor this. We want to make, bring it to a quick boil and then probably stop. We don't want to get it too thick, but cook it to the point where you want to on how thick you'd like to have or how thick you are accustomed to having your cream soups. If for some reason you thicken this too much, well that's simple. You can just add a little bit of milk back into this to help uh, thin out the uh, soup if it's too thick for you. So once this comes up to temperature, we can go ahead and serve this. This can be a great appetizer or a separate entree. It's just really good stuff. And this recipe is all the way from Vienna, Austria, where my mother used to work in a restaurant there before the war. And it is done. If you like tomato soup, I think you'd really like cream of asparagus soup. One of my favorite things to eat with this as elegant as this is, is toasted cheese sandwiches. But you could also finish this up with some garlic bread. Uh, my mother also used to make stuffed mushrooms. I mean, you can make this as simple or as elegant as you want. But one thing for sure is this stuff is 
delicious. And the nice thing about this, if you don't eat it all, you can freeze dry your freeze dried soup. So there's that other option. This is just one of the many things you can do with freeze dried asparagus. And you can make it out of fresh asparagus if you'd like. But it's a wonderful thing. It's a tradition in our family. So try it out, see how you like it. I'd like to thank you for your time. Please subscribe and remember, go forth and freeze dry the world.